Hi guys, I'm Autumn Beckman. And I'm Paul. And this is Vlogmas Day 22. Welcome. Can we do it with fingers? Let's see, you do your 10, because somebody asks about this. There's my two. Oh, that's right, somebody <laughs> did ask. So, that's 12, <laughs> and I'll flash, that's 22. There we go. We got it. We're really good at math. Well, I've got Paul with me today, and we are going to do something that I think a few of you requested when I first asked for ideas of things to do during Vlogmas, things you'd like to see, and that is we're going to answer some holiday questions. So I pulled these questions off the internet, a little Q&A. Paul tends to talk a lot, so we have narrowed it down, well, he has narrowed it down to five questions. I gave him 10 and we're gonna go with five and see how we do. It's time for question number one. All right, let me get my phone back up again. My first question that I want to answer, what was your most memorable Christmas as a kid? It's not what you think. You know, most people are gonna say, oh, the, the greatest Christmas ever, whatever. I'm, I'm saying I'm probably about seven years old at this point. At that point where you're getting your first bicycle, we had gone to Sears back then and picked out this bicycle and it was so great. It's just really cool bicycle. So Christmas morning, I was all excited and waiting to see my bicycle and it wasn't there. My parents had to tell me that, I guess it's, it's true these days too as well, but it wasn't ready. They, they couldn't get it by Christmas. It was being shipped from someplace, God knows where, and it wasn't there on Christmas morning. And they had to tell me, you know, like, well, it's gonna come, but it's just not here today. Well, you know, when you tell a kid that on Christmas morning, that his most desired Christmas present isn't there, it's kind of a bummer. In a weird sense, that's my most memorable uh, Christmas as a kid. Not necessarily the best one, but certainly the one I remember the most. So I'll just go through all five. Do I get to answer them too? Sure. Are you gonna answer the same ones or different? set of five. The, the same five. Okay. What's your most memorable Christmas as a kid? For him, it revolved around a present and mine are the same way. And I have two where I remember getting presents that really stood out to me. So I'm going to tell you about both of them. Okay. One of them was a book. So I grew up wanting to be a Disney animator. It was this Disney animation book from the Disney store, which was a pretty new place at that time. And like my whole life, evolved around Disney and doing everything I could to learn more about animation and all that. And this book, I think it was maybe $65, which was a fortune for my parents and especially to spend on a book, right? But I got it. I got it for Christmas. And I actually remember opening it on Christmas Eve because we had a tradition where we would open one gift every Christmas Eve. I love that book. I looked through it so many times. I read so much of it. I drew things from it. And years later, when my father was doing his cocaine stuff, he used to steal from us a lot and pawn things, and that's one of the things, among the other Disney animation books that I'd acquired by then, he took all of those and sold them. That was the most hurtful thing I think he's ever done to me as far as taking things because he knew what those meant to me. My happy story turned real sad real quick there, didn't it? Sure did. We took a downturn <clears throat> here. This is supposed to be uplifting holiday stories. Mine wasn't and yours wasn't. Uh, I guess they both weren't. <laughs> What's you know? wrong with us? <laughs> the other Christmas that I remember so well because of the gifts, I don't know where the money came from for these, but we got, I got a keyboard, like a little electric keyboard, a little Casio, and then my mom and I both got full length black rabbit coats. A rabbit coat? Rabbit coats. Wow. It did used to get cold in the in the winters in Houston. And I'm saying that right before we're about to have a cold snap. It's supposed to get down to 16 degrees, but only for a minute. And then, you know, the cold is supposed to last for about two days, I think. But yeah, keyboard and a, a rabbit coat. I had that coat for years until I wore it out and had to be well, it was never replaced, but it had to be tossed. You could use that wabbit coat now. Yeah, the next few days, yeah. <laughs> What's your question number two? Question number two is, what are your favorite Christmas treats? I don't think this, this won't be much of a surprise. My favorite Christmas treats are, come on, anything chocolate. The little chocolate Christmas trees, you know, from uh, various makers. They, they form chocolates into... Christmas ornaments and Santa Clauses and things. I love that stuff. Not because it's Christmas so much, but because it's chocolate. The other thing that I love is, is a tree. And I, I don't know if you define it as a tree. It's eggnog. I love eggnog. I've always loved eggnog. I, I must 
traditionalist, I mix it with brandy or, or whiskey or rum or something. Again, I don't know if that's, that's a treat or not, but it's one of my favorite things of Christmas that I look forward to. Well, you guys know my answer to that question. It's Williams Sonoma hot chocolate and Williams Sonoma peppermint bark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. Why is your shirt so giant? Well, a few Christmases ago, her mother, we were having Christmas with the family, with the in-laws, with her sister and, and husband and so forth. We were having Christmas at her mother's house at Katie, and she decided that she was going to get Christmas pajamas for all of us. So she went and bought all of these pajamas online. All matching. All matching red pajamas. But they were huge. I mean, the shoulders on this thing, my God, you know, I could be Paul Bunyan, but uh, that's what this is. It's the shirt from uh, that Christmas past uh, pajama set, and I'm wearing it because we need to be red and green. We, we did coordinate on purpose. We did. Yeah. Number three, what are your favorite Christmas traditions? Why don't you go first? I was hoping you would because I don't remember. <laughs> One of them is that my grandfather would make these cookies called tea cakes and now my sister is the one who makes them. I'm, depending on the weather situation and how that goes, I, I may be going over there on Friday and filming her making some of them and, and showing you guys how she decorates them because she's a professional baker and she can teach you a few tricks. And they're just delicious. I don't know if I'm allowed to give the recipe or not. I'll have to find that out. But they're wonderful. And that's certainly one of our favorite holiday traditions. My mom always made fudge and divinity. What else? The opening one gift on Christmas Eve. I know a lot of people do that. I can think of a couple others, but I don't want to just sit here all night thinking of things to come up with. Yeah, I'm just thinking of one, and, and it's the tradition that I liked as a kid and I still like today. And it's it's when you go out, you get in your car, and you drive through the neighborhoods and see all the Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so interesting because over the years, and I'm talking about many years, that's changed so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back when I was a kid and we do that in the car, the city was much smaller and it was more concentrated. It, it seems like Everyone, 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 every house on every block would have some sort of Christmas decorations. And it was, yeah. back in the day, it was those big giant light bulbs that you have to screw in. They were like an inch and a half long and they'd put them in their trees and around their house. And then that went on and on and on. And to this day, I love to do that, especially with the way people decorate their homes nowadays. I mean, with all the high tech and everything, it, it's just fascinating. And, and I, I never get tired of that. That That is probably my only tr Christmas tradition, but it's still my favorite and it's a big one for me. We've never done that. We're going to do it. I'll you believe wait. it. I'll believe it when I see it. We'll do it. Question number four is what is your best, uh, I'm sorry, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Well, you know, I'm sorry, it won't be exciting, but it's going to be It's a Wonderful Life. I loved it the first time I ever saw it. I still love it. Don't get to see it that often. There's just something about it, you know, um, maybe because it's it's an old movie, it's in black and white. There's something about it. I, I, don't, I can't even explain it. The whole arc of the movie is very moving for me. Jimmy, he's... He's such a great actor, you know, he just, that was one of his best performances. My favorite Christmas movie is A Christmas Story, because it's funny. I'm less interested in the sappy, traditional movies. Mm -hmm. what, what about that movie particular do you like? You said it's funny, but... Right, it's funny. That's it? it? Yeah, it, it makes fun of a lot of things, yeah, and it, I think it has stood the test of time well. I think if you watch something like The Griswolds, what's their... The, Family Vacation, those mm -hmm. movies, they have a Christmas one. I think that doesn't stand up to time as well. I think that's more dated and it has jokes that aren't appropriate anymore. But I think A Christmas Story just stands up really well. It's still really funny. Not bad. Yeah. That reminds me of another tradition that my family has. It's me, my mom, and my sister once it was just the three of us. My mom started a tradition of us watching... A White Christmas every year. That's a good movie, too. That's another good movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Great music in it. Yeah, I, I have to agree. If, if I thought about it, that would probably be my second, maybe even tied up there with my favorite movie because of the music. You know, I just, if there's good music in a movie, I'm there. I'm mm -hmm. there. Yeah, Rosemary Clooney's a song she does, Love, You Didn't Do Right By Me. That's my favorite one in the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, number... Again, not happy things. I don't, <coughs> I don't like happy things. <laughs> 
<laughs> apparently. Oh, apparently. <laughs> okay, so we're on what, number five now already? Yeah, we're already at number five. Wow. What are your favorite winter activities? Yes. My favorite winter activity is photography. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of going back to the previous question, there's a lot of things you can photograph when you go around the neighborhoods and look at the Christmas lighting. It gets more inventive and, and uh, fresh every year. Hopefully, being Christmas in the winter, Hopefully there are things to photograph that are wintry. I always look or hope every Christmas in Houston that it would snow. Well, it's happened about three times in my life. But when it did, oh boy, got that camera out. Photography any time of the year, but especially at Christmas because there are fresh, new things to photograph which you won't find any other time of the year. I remember one Christmas it snowed on Christmas Eve and we got a really good snow that year. Mm -hmm. It was probably 10 or 15 years ago. The local newspaper the next morning had a photograph of Galveston Beach in the snow. Yes. It was this a photo that took up the whole front page or at least folded in half and guess what was in the snow. Tell me it was a dachshund. It was a dachshund oh, running across wow. the beach. It Perfect. was a black and tan dachshund, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh, that's great. This doesn't get any better than that. No. I haven't answered the question yet. What was it again? It was what's your favorite, favorite winter, winter activity activities? or Christmas activity. I Christmas activity? What did it say? Christmas or winter? Uh, Those are two different things. Oh my god, oh my god. Winter. Winter activity. Winter. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because we don't have much of a winter here, so I think That's more true. of when I have been up north. So my father's from Michigan. We spent a few Christmases when I was a kid in Michigan, and we had snow up there. And then I also lived in New York City for a few years, so I had snow up there every year too. So for me, when I think of winter, I think of snow. It's kind of maybe a boring answer, especially to people who live where it snows every year but just that first snow of the year it's so beautiful and just blankets and where nobody's been in it yet and there aren't footprints and everything and just just looking at it and being out in it even and even being in the cold you know it, it gets old when you're living in it but for somebody who hasn't grown up with that it's very fun i remember my favorite time in the snow we've talked about this before but it wasn't technically winter, I guess, and it certainly wasn't Christmas. You know right. what I'm going to say? Mm -hmm. Italy. No. I mean, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not in Italy. Not in Italy. New York. New York, yes. yeah. When we were up there for my spring break, it was in the middle of March, and we got a blizzard. It was a huge nor'easter that... Mm -hmm hit the Northeast. What fun we had that day. We flew into New York and, and got our hotel room, and then the next morning woke up to this blizzard. I mean, we can tell you stories that, yeah. that are funny to people, probably who, maybe not funny to people who live there, but I remember coming out of the, the swinging door, the revolving door of the hotel that morning. I, I came around, you know, the door opens and I come around and, and it was like, I just get hit with this blizzard wind and snow and stuff hitting me in the face and it was March and when we left Houston it was like hot and humid mm -hmm. <laughs> just crazy crazy that was something else yeah mm. well that was our questions five questions definitely took up a lot of time yep so are you ready to do advent calendars let's do it Paul's gonna do them this time we are starting with the local chocolate calendar and we are on day number 22 day 22 this is gonna be probably pretty ugly because it's pushing in and I want it to come out. Here we go. It's so hard to get out intact. Who designed this? Look at oh, this. I don't know. <laughs> it's <laughs> devastating. Now you know why I'm not doing this every day. So, mm, I'm getting kind of a caramel, very crunchy inside to it. I wish there were more chocolate. It's, it's good, but I don't know what to say about it except it's crunchy, it's good it's sweet and it's got some chocolate mm. your fans love your blue eyes when you give them a, a some winks or something <laughs> nice and, no, and my this fingers folks, are all messy. yeah and this folks is why i don't eat the whole chocolate because it takes longer <laughs> and different it's messy. styles yes right okay okay now we're doing the tony's chocolate calendar and we are on day number 22 which, which is, is here. right there mm -hmm. so is there an art to opening this one yes that one's harder to open so i push it against the wall mm -hmm. and push the center in with my knuckle okay to open it see wow yeah it's tough right yeah and yeah y'all didn't know vlogmas was this much work i hide it from you 
My goodness. It says on the little yellow bar. Where oh, okay. Is. Dark almond sea salt, 51%. It says dark chocolate, so I think I'm going to like it. Here we go. Mmm. That's hard, right? This one will break your teeth. Yeah. Definitely can taste the almond. Nice dark chocolate, kind of semi-sweet. Very good. Unlike Autumn, I don't put half of it in a, in a package. I eat the whole thing. And now we have to wait for him to finish chewing before we can do the next calendar. Don't film me chewing. Let me know when you're ready. I have to cleanse my palate. Now we'll do the jewelry calendar. We're on day 10. Day 10. Are your fingers clean? Well, they're not clean enough. Clean them better. Day number 10. Here we go. little bag inside. It's a sea turtle. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Made of little tiny beads. Sequins on the back. Beads. Beads. Yeah, those are all beads. Well, what do I know? That is beautiful. Look at that. Do you hang that from a chain or what happens? Yeah, it's an ornament. It's oh, it's a Christmas tree on. Yeah, it's a jewelry calendar, mm -hmm. but they gave me yesterday this pink scrunchie. Today an ornament, okay. not jewelry. So, yeah, all over the map. Yeah. Okay, so then we have... All right, now it's time for the dogs to get their calendars. Check it out, Roxy. Mm-hmm. We're looking for box number 22. 22. Where would it be? Anywhere? There is no 22. <laughs> Here it is. It's already been opened. Uh-oh. How could that be? Well, that be that I opened the wrong one. Uh-oh. Mm. So what happened, Beckman? Did you have too much eggnog when you opened that? <gasps> oh, I just spilled my water all over the place. Okay, I opened 22 instead of 21 yesterday, so we'll open 21 today. 21 today. Here we go. And this is the one that pops, right? Right. Somebody's <clears throat> been watching Vlogmas. Yes. So, I think you put them all down. It depends. I do different things together. every day. Roxy's wondering why they're going on the table instead of in mm -hmm. her mouth. So, one for Roxy and one for Baron? That's right. Roxy? Ooh, good girl. Baron. Come on, Baron. I know you can get up here. Here you go. Oh, my goodness. Take my finger off with <laughs> it. This one, I think, will get 22 correctly, right? Probably not. Uh... <laughs> Okay, we're looking for 22. I think you're doing 21 again. 21 again, yeah. okay. Okay, 21. Here we go. Here we go. We've got one, two, still Give two Roxy of them. Roxy looking at it. Roxy, here we go. Oh, good girl. She's so polite mm -hmm. most of the time. And then there's Baron. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops, Bear. Come on, Bear, try it again. It's never happened, Bear. You're, you're losing it. Come on, Bear. He knocks that over every day. Baron. Here, Baron. Oh, goodness. <laughs> try to take my finger again. And then Vincent. And then Vincent. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to move that sign to get to box 22. And I see it. Box 22. There it is. Mm -hmm. Hey, Vincent. Polly G has your box tonight. Pardon? No, not Autumn. Paul. She, she said pardon. Did she? I thought she said autumn. No, nope. she says pardon. Paul can't stick his arm in to put the box on the shelf. Because I won't get it back. Because Vincent will take his arm off. So he's going to put it on top of her house there. Here stuff. you are, Vincent. There you go. There you go. And I guess she's just going to stay on her swing mm -hmm. like she's been doing the last few mm -hmm. days. She's still working on number 21. Yeah, she got her peanut out though. Oh, yes. Here she comes. There she comes. Can I get it, Vincent? You know, I could probably hand it to her and she would take it. She me. doesn't take the boxes. They're too big. Hi, Vincent. Or upside down again. Hello, Vincent. Hello. Are you going to bite me because Paul's here? No. Are you going to be friendly? No, 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 bat bird. She looks like a poltergeist mm -hmm. walking around on the ceiling. All right. Bye, Vincent.